welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today we are discussing about a mbbs case can we start now yes sir a uh, 72 year old gentleman mr rajagopalan retired bank officer from kochi was brought to the er with complaints of uh, constipation for the past 5 days altered sensorium for a day irrelevant tox and abdominal distension for one day okay. now history of pressing illness so what in an emergency case it will be slightly different but uh, what will be the first investigation you do in a patient like this so whenever we hear about uh, altered sensorium the first thing would be to send a grbs to okay. see if he is most important is sugar. sugar blood sugar should blood be sugar. Ro- uh, ruled out the okay. hypoglycemia yes. should be ruled, ruled out can yes, can continue uh, history of presenting illness patient was apparently asymptomatic until a day ago when the patient after waking up from his bed was not in his complete sensorium when asked about the common questions on uh, the daily morning he would talk something completely irrelevant and he was drowsy for the rest of the day uh the the bystanders tried waking him up several times but uh, he wouldn't wake up and uh, when asked to stand up he would again be drowsy and he uh, fell fell back on the bed and he could he couldn't do his daily activities like brushing his teeth and standing up because uh, he was not he was he was fully disoriented to do okay. so and um, also uh, uh, there is the bystander gives a history of increased daytime sleepiness for the past few days okay now patient also is it uh, relevant in a case like this increased day time le- sleepiness yes sir there's something called altered sleep cycle okay. so in patient especially with uh, uh, or in altered sense uh, so that gives us a clue that we have to think about uh, liver diseases and hepatic, hepatic pathology and hepatic, hepatic and cephalopathy oh. so here the bystander clearly gives a history of have the patient has al- altered sleep cycle like sleeping okay. more during the day time oh. and being drowsy okay um and also a uh, patient also has a history of constipation in the past 4 uh, to 5 days is it important in this case yes sir because uh, again uh, in hepatic if there's constipation constipation is one of the precipitating factors for hepatic okay. encephalopathy okay. so uh, he has passed heart stools on the uh, uh, like 4 days back with a lot of straining and then for the past 3 days he has in past any okay. uh, stools says so there's no history of abdominal pain vomiting and uh, uh the uh, the bystander gives a history of increase in abdominal size abdominal distension the patient okay. already had abdominal distension but then they noticed a sudden increase in size okay. but it was not associated with any uh, breathlessness as an mbbs doctor what you should know is abdominal girth examination is very very important yes, we are talk- telling the history we are just telling abdomen is increasing yes, when the patient is admitted to ward every day ideally we have to yes, take the abdominal girth and document it yes sir okay. uh so there's increase in the size of abdomen compared to the previous which is gradually prog- progressive there's no history of uh, breathlessness fever decreased urine output or uh, hematemesis melina bleeding per rectum okay. there's no history of chest pain increased sweating po- um, parox- paroxysmal nocturnal dys- dyspnea slurring of speech weakness of any limb or there's no history of high colored urine clay colored stools and pruritus okay. what is this clay colored uh, so a uh, clay colored stool in uh, uh, to rule, to know the types of jaundice okay, in if the uh, patient is jaundiced if the stool is clay colored then there is uh, an uh, like we can make out that it's an obstructive jaundice yeah, okay. obstructive uh, obstructive jaundice so there's no such history now past history patient uh, has a, it's a known case of type 2 diabetes mellitus since 15 years and and he's on oral hypoglycemic agents and 8 uh, years back he had such similar episodes with history of abdominal this distension this oha uh, is recommended in a case of uh, ap- chronic liver disease um, ideally oha okay. should be stopped okay. and put the patient on insulin, insulin. because okay. oha can aggravate the problem okay so okay. whenever possible if the patient is having cld you always try to put the patient on insulin than oha okay. okay yes sir doesn't mean that it's absolutely contraindicated but there is a relative contraindication Yes. Uh, so, uh, few year, four years back, the patient had similar history of abdominal distension and uh, altered sensorium, and he was brought to the local hospital and evaluated for the same, and was diagnosed to have chronic liver disease with portal hypertension. Mm-hmm. And uh, on UST, ascites was also found, and ascitic tapping was done. Uh, How do you diagnose uh, CLD? So. Uh, um you usd findings is USD. usd normally it is by usd USD. you can see the liver you can see the size of size the liver you can see the consistency of liver but there is a new scan that is called as fibro scan uh-huh. you can pick up pick it up very early it's a type uh-huh. of ultrasound 
then look for the splenomegaly megaly. Okay. Then ultimately you do an endoscopy and uh, see whether any varices are there. So all these things uh, finally put put a single diagnose chronic, chronic liver, liver disease. disease. Uh, there's no history of systemic hypertension, dyslimpia, uh, and uh, no history of any surgeries in the past. Okay. Now, personal history: the patient consumes a mixed diet, normal appetite. Uh, there's increased daytime so sleep. So diet has got any importance in this type of cases? Uh, yes, sir. Like uh, such patients with CLD, we should make sure if the patient is on high protein diet or no, low protein. You should uh, make sure that no, patient if the uh, patient is in low protein low diet, protein, we should ask if especially uh, animal protein. Animal okay. protein. Okay. So animal protein should be restricted. And high carbohydrates oh. and low protein. So recent uh, diet change is very very important. Yes. Rather than knowing the patient fastly, fast well, he may be taking so many other uh, type of diets. But recently, whether he has increased his uh, protein intake, that is very important. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's increased uh, daytime sleepiness and uh, uh, bowel habits. He has constipation, normal bladder habits, and he's not habituated to alcohol or smoking. Mm. Family history, there's no relation. Bladder habits, any importance in this type yes, of cases? Yes, sir. Uh, we have to ask about decreased urine output urine and output. anything to okay. correlate hepatorenal okay. syndrome. Okay, if there is a renal failure, hepatorenal okay. syndrome is an initial phase of the renal disease. There you get only uh, proteinuria. But after some time, the patient can develop anuria and slowly renal mm, shutdown can renal occur. Shutdown. Okay. Yes. Family history, there's no relevant family history, no history of CLD in the family. Now, uh, going to examination. Generally. Can you get a uh, family history of uh, CLD? Yes. Hmm? Uh, Very rarely infiltrative disorders can... Or HCC or anything. HCC, uh, not very common. Um, but uh, the hepatitis B and all can run in families because uh, it can spread from one person to other person. Yes, okay, sir. through contact. Okay. Otherwise, family history of uh, this one is uh, uh, seen in congenital disorders. Wilson disease. They are congenital disorders. Okay. On okay. examination. Starting with general examination, patient was drowsy, he was disoriented to time, place and person. Weight 70 kg, height 168, BMI 24 kg, mm -hmm. mod uh, uh, moderately built and nourished. Vitals, pulse rate 68 per minute, regular rhythm, normal volume, character, condition of vessel wall norm normal, no radio ra radial or radiofemoral delay and all peripheral pulses were felt bilaterally equal. Okay. Uh, blood pressure, uh, 1170 millimeter mercury taken in the left uh, left uh, upper arm in supine position. Uh, respiratory rate was 14. You want to examine a uh, postural drop in this type of patients? Um, it's very important because uh, uh, patients who are having diabetes, ideally we have to take a standing BP. Because one of the common presentation diabetic autonomic neuropathy is postural, postural hypotension. hypotension. Okay. Okay. Not from the point of view of uh, hepatic disease, from the yeah. point of view mm -hmm. of diabetes. Uh, respiratory rate is 14 per minute and temperature was ephebral. Okay. Uh, pallor present, ictris present, sinusis. What are the reasons for pallor in a case of liver disease? Uh, so one one thing is that um, the upper GI bleeding can bleeding, cause bleeding, GI bleed. and uh, coagulopathies, 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 and uh, bone marrow uh, suppression. Bone marrow suppression, bone marrow suppression is one of the cause. Splenic distraction. Dis yeah. So there are multiple reasons. Uh, one of the major thing is uh, GI bleed only. Okay. Splenic destruction is also seen in many patients. Bone marrow suppression is seen in many patients. Oh. Yes, and uh, um, there's no lymphadenopathy. Okay. And edema, bilateral pit pitting edema was present and sacral edema was also present. Okay. Uh, head to foot examination, uh, alopecia present, ictris present, madarosis was hmm. present. Uh, there's no parotid. Madarosis is lateral, lateral uh, eyebrow. Head, eyebrow was but which are the conditions? Ideally, you'll get this. C I CLD. CLD, you can get. Okay. That is a uh, part of general loss of hair. Classically, this is described in hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. leprosy, and all. Hypothyroidism is one of the major condition. But in, here in CLD, because of loss of loss hair of everywhere, hair. you get uh, that side also. Yes. There is no parotid enlargement, uh, no spider navy, no gynecomastia. Mm -hmm. Uh, abdominal distension was present. Caput medusae was absent. There is no dilated veins uh, seen over the abdomen. Uh, no history of clubbing, leukonychia, palmar erythema, uh, pruritic uh, pro pro marks okay. and the uh, flapping tremors were present. Okay. What is flapping tremor? So, flapping tremor is uh, um, seen in grade 2 hepatic. It two is seen in encephalopathy. Yeah. It is one of the signs of hepatic encephalopathy, grade 2 onwards. So, how do you demonstrate it? So, we ask the patient to uh, stretch his okay. uh, arm, forearm and then hold it still for uh, about two minutes and then you see the patient flapping, and flapping okay. it what down. is 
what, what is the mechanism behind this so there is a dissymmetry between the neuro um, there is a connection, connection from your joint yeah, to your brain, to your brain okay yeah. this will be interrupted that's all that's right. okay so you are not able to hold it properly and goes down okay yes. that is clapping trauma mm -hmm. it is seen in many types of encephalopathies including hepatic encephalopathy okay. um examination of uh, systemic examination starting with the examination of gi system examination of oral cavity the patient has got poor oral hygiene but there's no evidence of oral thrush then there's no uh, tonsillar hypertrophy there's no gum hypertrophy there's no bleeding gum seen okay. now examination of abdomen on inspection the abdomen was distended umbilicus was central and inverted skin is stretched but there's no scar sinuses or dilated veins uh, no visible peristalsis seen there's no divarication of recti movement of abdominal wall coincides with respiration uh, hernial orifices were normal on cuff, cuff impulse and external genitalia normal no uh, scrotal edema okay. no sense and uh, palpation hmm. on superficial palpation no tenderness noted there's no warm guarding or rigidity was okay. absent and in deep palpation uh, liver a non tender non pulsatile swelling was palpated in the right hypochondrium about 5 uh, cm uh, in pillar of the right coastal margin in the mid axillary line on very deep uh, palpation it moves with respiration uh, with the smooth surface and rounded edge okay. uh, spleen was not palpable and okay. kidney uh, it's not okay. well at all uh, there was uh, no other palpable swelling and abdominal girth was about uh, 64 cm okay where will you check the abdominal girth Uh, and the at the level of umbilicus and the umbilicus is the best thing okay and the hernial orifices were normal okay and on percussion uh, shifting dullness was present auscultation uh, auscultation bowel sounds were you, uh, like uh, hardly you are you are told or not no sir yet after percussion the uh, only thing is uh, when you are presenting it's okay auscultation can be told last okay but when you are examining ideally you have to auscultate first because once you palpate the abdominal suppose somebody is having abdominal pain the the sounds can be increased because of that mm. tenderness or whatever it is so ideally you have to auscultate first if you want to auscultate yes, but when you are writing and presenting it's okay like an mbbs case sheet the auscultation can be told last that yes, is sir. there is a deviation from other system mm. okay but uh, when you are writing you should write like normal case sheet okay, okay. uh auscultation bowel sounds were heard sir okay. and there was no uh, bruy or venous hum or okay. rub heard and percussion again shifting dullness was present liver span was about uh, 10 cm okay. pruitrel was absent so liver span is not increased mm, yes. it's normal yes sir what is the reason for this so because uh, cirrhotic cirrhotic, cirrhotic liver sir are smaller, smaller because of the contraction fibrosis it will be smaller mm. can you get a large liver in uh, cirrhotic liver mm. Uh, if it progresses to, uh, progress to HCC, 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 it can get can a larger. Hep in the early phases of alcoholic liver disease, also it will be larger. Larger hepatitis. Whereas in uh, liver disease due to hepatitis, why there is B or C, it will be always shrunken. Okay, yes, so that that also you should know. Other yes, systems. So other systems are with a normal respiratory system. There is so no. You know, system. should know what all things you should look, look for. In respiratory system, you have to look for any uh, pleural effusion, right side right pleural effusion. in uh, cns you have to look for any uh, flapping tremors and, and extensor plantar yes, in uh, cardiac system uh, check for signs of cardiac failure if the patient uh, cardiac failure cardiac and pericardial effusion okay so what will be your final diagnosis so uh, this uh, 72 year old gentleman he is a case of chronic liver disease with portal hypertension now he is presented with uh, altered sense you have any evidence for portal hypertension here uh, so clinically previous, uh, previously diagnosed previous clinical, diagnosis previous diagnosis what uh, uh, what what evidence you have to tell portal hypertension so we look for caput like caput medusa no no here in this here. patient um, ascites 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 is one of the but it can be it can Spleno occur even spleno megaly is not spleno okay so clinically it will be difficult to tell portal hypertension, hypertension. here unless until you have an investigation since yes, this patient you have a previous history you can tell otherwise we need to either we need to have spleno megaly okay. or uh, you should have history of uh, very cell bleed Bleeding vomiting all these things yes, otherwise uh, here the patient's diagnosis will be hepatic encephalopathy grade 2 grade 2 hepatic okay. encephalopathy oh how do you investigate and how do you treat this patient so initially as we said because the patient came with altered sensorium we would send grvs and we can send all the electrolyte abgs mm -hmm. to know if there's any a uh, metabolic disturbances that could have induced the hepatic like hypokalemia hyponatremia so we send all okay. electrolytes 
and then UST hmm. uh, to know the progression of the liver, the size of the liver and how far it has gone. Okay. And so uh, once you diagnose hepatic encephalopathy, there is no need to know further what is the progression. Progression will be something else. You do some other investigation. First, 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 uh, first time when the patient come to uh, your hospital, you do ultrasound and make sure that patient is having hepatic, uh, sorry, chronic liver disease and ascites. Again, again, no need to do ultrasound. Okay. Already it is done, no need to do. Okay. But there are some other investigation you need to do. What are the investigations? Ammonia. Uh, so, ammonia can use. be done. Ammonia, what is importance? So, because hyperammonemia can cause cannabis. So, whenever so liver disease is okay. there, ammonia okay. can be elevated and can produce hepatic encephalopathy. Okay. But it will never correlate with the level of the ammonia. Ammonia mm -hmm. level can be sometimes high, sometimes low, but it will not correlate with the severity of the hepatic encephalopathy. So, ammonia is very important then. Uh, CBC, upper J bleed okay. itself can okay. cause anemia can produce then uh, platelets. platelets you can get platelet platelet is an indirect evidence of portal oh, hypertension portal. whenever the spleen is enlarged it will kill more platelets okay. and thrombocytopenia can be there then infection can precipitate hepatic okay, that is very important next thing is target for infection you have to find out whether infection is there or not how do you find out yes uh, total, total count total count she has already told what else CRP. What are the common infections you should know? CRP can be done. What are the common infections? Uh, SBP can be done. SBP is one of the common. Pneumonia are another. Urinary tract infection. These are the three important things. So, urinary tract infection, you have to check the urine. urine uh, urine is that urine. pneumonia, you have to take an X-ray. Uh, uh, SBP, how do you diagnose? We can, if there is enough fluid, we can send the fluid for acetic tapping fluid for okay. culture. And so, you have to take SBP. a small sample, sample. and uh, send for counts Counting. and send for culture. culture okay the counts are elevated like wbc counts are elevated you should suspect a bacterial mm -hmm. infection and look for the culture okay what is a common organism which produces svp e. most common is gram negative in that e coli is the most common so how do you treat this patient this patient has got hepatic encephalopathy and portal hypertension. How do you treat this patient? Any other investigation you want to know whether patient is bleeding tendency is there or not? Endoscopy can be Afterwards. Oh. So you have to PTA do PTA. PTA okay. Then now you have to treat the hepatic encephalopathy, then we'll go for endoscopy. Mm -hmm. How do you treat this patient? So one thing is he has constipation, so mm. that should be So treated. relieve the constipation <laughs> first. How do you relieve the constipation? By laxatives. By laxatives are not exactly correct. Non absorbable. Non absorbable uh, uh, so, so uh, non absorbable, it is actually a sugar. Lactulose. What is that? Lactulose. Lactulose. Non absorbable sugar. Lactulose. So that will remove some amount of stool, it will reduce the pH, it reduces the ammonia forming bacteria. So that can be given. Then and, uh, you correct all these things, effect. then it will be corrected. First is uh, constipation. constipation. Next one, it's infection. Serious. How do you control the infection? Antibiotics can and be. And which given. antibiotics is ideal? Uh, ceph uh, third generation cephalosporin. Cephatox, cephatoxin and septacidin, whatever it is. Yes. The third generation surplus for it. Then gut sterilization. Gut sterilization by rifaximin. Then uh, what else? Yeah. There are other problems. If there is electrolyte disturbance, ah, can what electrolyte like disturbance? Hypokalemia, hyponatremia. Hypokalemia should be corrected. Corrective. More than hyponatremia. Hyponatremia can be mostly due to. Uh, dilution. It is dilutional. More fluid, le same amount of salt also you get uh, hyponatremia. So, it is a dilutional thing. But you have to correct the hypokalemia. hypokalemia. So, if the potassium is low, you have to correct it. What is the potassium level here? Oh, it is low. If it is low, you have to correct, correct it. it. Potassium should be corrected then. Mm. If the PTNR is highly elevated, like PTNR Injection is... vitamin K, you can... PTNR is 5 or 6, what you do? Uh, FFP, 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 FFP is FFP important, FFP. not vitamin K. Vitamin K is useful okay. mainly in obstructive type of lesions, not in protein jaundice. It can be useful, but here FFP has to be given. Okay. Fresh frozen okay. plasma. Awesome. Then, yeah. how do you remove, like you have to remove the fluid now. Patient is having ascites, difficulty in breathing will be there. You have to remove Tapping. fluid. How do you? A uh, diuretic should be given. Uh, which diuretic? Um, uh, so, because potassium sparing diuretic okay. like so lasilactone should Normally, be. we give spa Spir spironolactone with Lasix. Lasix is prosamide. Spironolactone prevents potassium mm. from going out. Uh, prosamide removes water. Okay. Yes. More amount of water will be removed by prosamide. Mm. So, both should be given. Yes. Then, mm. so this patient will be admitted to ward after treating in ICU, like all this thing, whatever you told. 
he is better now he will be shifted to ward and we have to discharge him how do you discharge him we put him in hepat hepatoprotective drugs like udiliver or something udiliver has got nothing to do with all these things we are we are talking about a scientific discussion there is no udiliver there uh, to prevent further you have to prevent further gi gi bleed oh. how do you do the, what drug can be used Pro beta blockers beta like blockers either pro uh, propranolol can be given or carbidolol oh. can be given okay. that has to be given yes. then and a uh, constipation should be avoided so again we can lactose should be continued continue. okay then and then all these triggers preventive aspects you have to advise the patient diet salt intake water intake what how much water intake we have to advise about 1.5 1.1 liter 1.5 liter okay salt uh you have to increase salt or decrease the salt salt should be restricted, restricted to no salt. extra salt okay. we are not reducing the salt intake but no extra salt should be taken yes. what happens to the patient if they, they take more salt then they tend to have more uh, there will be more uh, water retention Wa more, more water more retention water can also so the normal problem is uh, whenever sodium is low we try to some doctors try to give more salt mm. that will create more problem it will accumulate more water, more water. So, so hyponatremia is due to dilution mm. not because of uh, real hyponatremia yes, okay sir. then anything else to be done now you have to go for endoscopy why we are doing endoscopy to check for any esophageal viruses viruses if there is viruses um uh, banding. banding banding should banding. be done suppose this patient come with gi bleed mm. there also you have to do endoscopy but some drugs can prevent acute bleeding what are the drugs octreotide octreotide should be started immediately mm. then you take again the patient for endoscopy there emergency endoscopy is required mm. in a patient admitted like this requires an endoscopy to prevent further bleeding mm. okay yes. liver transplant uh, can be done can be done if there is no improvement in uh, like a patient's condition, condition liver transplant transplant should be done it all depends on king's college criteria okay. that we, sh we should read about that what else we have to do for this patient dieting we have already told yes sir what diet you advise the uh, low protein high carbohydrate diet and fibrous diet okay but yes. when you are discharging the patient we no need to restrict protein like like we, what we are done in our icu okay. we can advise the patient to take uh, normal vegetable protein not uh, animal protein yes sir okay these are the things you should do and you have to follow up this patient okay thank you